Good morning, Americans. This is your favorite alien <clears throat> here on the morning of uh, Tuesday, July 5th, 2022, sitting in for Paul Harvey this morning with a special rest of the story. Well, today's story is based on the History Channel's new uh, series they called Coliseum. And the people outside the uh, History Channel and the History Channel itself, which are promoting gladiators. If you do that History Channel, uh, you must make sure that you understand what you're promoting. Ancient Rome is a quagmire, an enigma, a very violent race. Oh boy, were they violent, okay? And you're promoting them as a glorious Rome. <laughs> they were an empire that lasted almost a thousand years in the West. From 753 to a certain degree, to 476 is the actual date. You uh, 753 BC to 476 AD is the time you give that. But they actually survived till 1453. So if you do that, you got over 2,000 years of Roman influence on this world. Byzantine, Roman, whatever you want to call them. But gladiators, come on, History Channel, and the people who are promoting the movie. And your so-called historians who are saying about gladiators. One in specific that you are promoting, Spartacus. Oh boy. How can you get things so wrong, especially the History Channel? How could you get things so wrong? Gladiators started in Rome around 360 or 306 B.C., around there. Somewhere around there. And they were part of a celebration of victories. Okay? Under the Roman Empire, they took a little uh, more of a sinister look. Under the Colosseum. Now... You gotta understand that Spartacus was never part of the Roman Colosseum. The Colosseum didn't exist in this time. And this is what surprised me about you History Channel promoters and you historians. Where are you getting that uh, gladiator, that uh, Spartacus was one of the best gladiators? In his time, yes, but not in the Colosseum. Spartacus, according to all published reports, was born in 111 B.C. and died in 71 B.C. under the Roman Republic before Julius Caesar. And Julius Caesar was a young guy at the time when he died, around 40. Did he die in the Colosseum? No. Did he die in the arena? No. He did not. He died fighting the Romans because he organized the first Roman revolt. And you got to understand where he was from, Thrace. Up until the United States in 1776 AD, Thrace was the only other nation, if you want to call it that, that actually went to an empire and say, we are free. And for that, the Romans went over there, squashed them. And by the time of a part of Spartacus' death in 71 BC, there was no Thracians left. That's how bad the Romans hated them for doing that. And that... If the British would have been just like the Romans, that's what would have happened to the Americans in 1776 A.D. 
Do you understand me, Americans? There was gladiator things, and there was amphitheaters, yes. The biggest one became the Colosseum, which is also known as Flavian's Theater, or uh, Amphitheater, that was started under Vespasian and finished by Titus. It took a long time to build. It was finished in 80, 80 A.D. And it had games till around 333 A.D. Christians couldn't take advantage of the games, you know. Plus the Christians were the main attraction for a couple of centuries too. Uh, yeah, but you also had other degradations going in there besides the gladiators. I mean, the... Hippo, who used to roam the Nile, was extinct because of the games at the Colosseum. And people like Commodus, oh man, he was a terrible guy. He used the games for his own purpose and he killed a lot of animals and a lot of people in his f brief reign that he had there. Imagine if Caligula had the Coliseum in his time, huh? Huh? See, Americans? Who was the best gladiator at the Coliseum? Nobody knows. Nobody's ever said that anything. But it wasn't Spartacus, because he was long dead. He was killed under the orders of Craxus. Back in 71 BC. So sitting here for Paul Harvey... This is your favorite alien, and now you know the rest of the story. Good day.